Welcome back to episode 25 of the Panther Soccer Podcast. I don't know how to begin this because we actually lost for once in our life and we're not really used to losing right now, so there's that. But episode 25, the Maddie Eastis episode, honestly, one of the most improved players since her time as a freshman here at UNI. And if we were to give out FIFA ratings to every single player on the team, I would easily give her a 91 rating. She's just so good on the ball. She's a regular starter. She's just, every time she has the ball, like I, I don't know, I get out of my seat a little bit more. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's she gonna do? What's she gonna do? Like every time she touches the ball, it's, she's always making something happen. Yeah, it's great. She's phenomenal on the ball. She's got a, got a very nice leg for shooting and eye for goal. Um, she has many on the season, I believe five, oops, yeah, five, five goals on the season. Um, so a very solid player and quite frankly, um, maybe we could talk about this just a little bit, but last year she didn't play much and kind of came off an injury late in the season. So really coming into this, this year, um, wasn't expecting her to be a starter or to be present on the team, but here she is, second in goal scored, and an absolute stud. Definitely uh, one of our better players. Man, yeah. Uh, well, our first real road trip of the year this past weekend, and well, we didn't quite get the results that we wanted, but uh, well, yeah, that's that's. You know, putting it politely, because the game against Murray State was, uh, that was atrocious. It was definitely a disaster of a game. I have not seen the team play just that not good all <laughs> in a long time. I and mean, we have not been, I can't remember the last team scored more than four on us. Surely it was Iowa. Yep. Um, so it's been a long time since we've seen that many goals against us. Especially this year, our defense coming off three shutouts in a row. I believe Murray State, before we played them, had scored like five goals all season. It was just a very weird game. Um, you want to dive into it a little bit? Well, for starters, uh, they scored a goal fairly early into the game, seven minutes in. And right then and there, I was like, you know what, we're still fine. It's early. It was. I genuinely thought it was a fluke. Goal. Like, okay, whatever, we're down 1 0. We've been in this position before. And it was just a well set up play by Murray State. I'm not discrediting me, like, oh, it was a fluky goal, should have happened. It was a well set up play. I'll give them that. And then when they scored a second time, I think it was five minutes later, then I'm like, is this a joke? Like, we're losing 2 0 to Murray State, a team that we destroyed last year. And, uh, yeah, no. And, about eight minutes later, not maybe not eight minutes later, maybe it was like 17 minutes later, 12 minutes later, I don't know. But sometime later, around halfway through the first half, Caitlin Richards goes down with an injury, and Kennedy Ben Buttonbach finally got to see some conference play, and uh, about, what was it, a minute into her playing, she gave up a goal, I believe. So, yeah. About a minute, and, and I remember that goal very specifically because like it was a free kick about 30 yards out, it took a weird bounce, and it went like just straight off of Kennedy's glove into the net. And like, yes, it's a stoppable shot, but I'm not blaming Kennedy for that because, she, like, she had to have been nervous. Like going into the game in a very unusual circumstance, like you can't really expect your backup goalkeeper to like immediately come out and you know be perfect. Like she's gonna make those mistakes, and it just sucks that that mistake happened to. Be a goal from Murray State, but after that, I felt like Kennedy did fine. Um, I don't know, what, how would you sum up that first half? Disastrous. <laughs> I can sum it up, especially a very slow start to the game um, for you and I. And what was weird about Murray State is all three of their first goals were set pieces. Yep. So a free kick from both of them actually were quite a ways out. The free kicks. Definitely not one where you'd think, oh, yeah, we're shooting this, uh, but they did. And then the middle one, the second goal on a corner kick, I don't know when, uh... well, anyways, so we do, it's not the corner, 
We do bounce back late, technically. Well, we, uh, we still gave up a fourth goal. Um, I don't remember anything about that fourth goal, other than us two just looking at each other like, really? I was ready uh, mentally to turn the game off, but it's over. Now, three goals. Usually, look, you look at a 3 0 score in soccer and say, yeah, game's over. And honestly, you probably could have said it. Obviously, you could have because we ended up losing. But I was not overly, like, it wasn't the end of the world because our team can put up three. Yep. So there was still maybe a little bit of hope for a point, at least, um, on the road, which would not have been bad. Um, but Oregon State slots on another one in, in the 50th minute uh, to make it 4 0, and that was when I'm like, we're losing. Yeah, at that point, both of us just turned on Retro Bowl and went from there. It was yeah. weird. Um, but Sophia Ballesteri got a goal late, uh, five minutes left in the half to uh, end up uh, half, left in the game to break the shutout, assisted by Marissa. Great play by Marissa as well, if I remember correctly. This right. one's Sophia, I don't know how the ball got to her, but she, like, top corner. Oh, that's right. It was a rocket of a shot. It was so cool, but. It was one goal on how team scored four, so it wasn't that cool. <laughs> yeah, literally our celebration uh, reminds me of that minion scene, you know, where like they kick it from midfield, goes in super slowly, and the crowd's like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not ideal. Yeah, this game was not ours. It was raining there. The field didn't look great on TV. That was still an excuse to give up four goals. Yeah, a disastrous performance to a team that hadn't won a conference game yet. Like that was their first conference win of the year. Yeah, and they destroyed what should be the best team in the conference. Like you and I, that's just unacceptable. Yeah, like, I don't mean to go on a rampant and cheer, but. We can't be losing those games. That's yeah, it must have been an awkward, uh, awkward night in Kentucky for them. But yeah, maybe they got so, some KFC to cheer them up or something. <laughs> I don't know, some stereotype from Kentucky. Yeah. Oh. Well, Kennedy um, ended up playing sixty-two minutes. Is what is logged here. So plenty of game time. But uh, the team did bounce back well. Three days later, Belmont on Sunday. And Belmont's a quality team. Like. Unfortunately, neither of us watched this game. We feel bad because we're supposed to, but I don't know. I didn't have access to watching the game on Sunday. I, neither. I was busy. <laughs> yeah. Bachelor party. Yeah, I, know. I don't even remember what my excuse was. I think like, I was just doing homework because midterms. It's fine. Um, but based off the stats, it seemed like Caitlin played a good game. Uh, I'm assuming, what was it, Olivia Kinnelli got the goal? Yes. Yeah, so. assisted by Warren again. That duo strikes again. And you can't. It's either Kanuffley to Heinz or Heinz to Kanuffley. It's a great partnership, and we talked about Macy Smith potentially getting started. She's now tied. Olivia is now tied her as a leading goal scorer on the team. But that connection up front between Olivia and Warren is so good between the two. They've had a lot of goals between the two. The one thing that really stood out to me though from the Belmont game. Is that we made the adjustment of we started Riley Chesna at defense at defender, and then we moved Caroline up to midfield. That adjustment, like, is something that we've like been kind of teasing at. Be like, oh, if only they put Caroline up to midfield. Like, who knows what she could do? And you know, about eighty-four minutes, I think she got put back at defender at some point. But like, hey, we won. So like, yeah, because I, I think Riley Chesna is very like. I've said this like at least a dozen times on the podcast now. I feel like she's overlooked for how quality of a player for Riley Chesna is. I think she's so, like, I think she's improved quite a bit. Yeah. As I think she, did she play with the team last spring? Yeah, she did. In the spring. I, I don't think much of her in the spring. Yeah, I don't think either of us were too crazy. We're like, oh, okay. But But also it's a spring ball, and it was her first time being with the team and like you're not used to their style of play yet. You're not used to those teammates yet. You don't like. You're kind of like, you know, you're a, you're a fish in a shark tank at that point. Like, but she seems to slide in pretty fine. This oh, ball, yeah. I mean, um, makes some pretty solid plays defensively. 
um, John's out and she's playing. So and her stamina is insane. Not stamina. Her speed is insane. Like she can be all the way up in the offensive box, and then they transition coming towards our end, and she'll just be right back to where she needs to be yeah. in the defensive zone. So another thing notable. On, at least on our stat sheet, this says that <coughs> Belmont only had two shots on goal, which and only one shot, which wasn't even on goal in the second half. So defensively, must have been a very solid performance. I really wish we kept possession stats. Um, yeah, wouldn't that be so. nice? But this is college soccer, and our technology and statistics aren't really. Uh, I don't know. They don't have a great indication on how well the game is played. I guess you could say, but. Oh well, not our problem. But man, second place is where you and I sit right now in the NBC. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it because if it wasn't for the Belmont State, pff, Belmont State, yeah, it's the Murray State loss, we would be in first right now, I believe. But yes, that's correct. I don't know. Um, you know, it feels like we're the second chair. French horn player in the school band. We gotta get better. <laughs> That's a quote from some random NAIA soccer coach or football coach. I can't think of his name, but if I find the clip, I'll put it up on that. Our football team was like the kid that plays second French horn in the school band. We gotta play better. I will say, this is exciting to me. Everything with that loss worked. It was a perfect day to lose. Missouri State tied Drake. Yep. Valparaiso tied. Uh, Belmont won, but they're lower than us. And, and UIC tied. So literally, basically what happened is even though we lost, the teams at our standing or above only got one point on the day. So if we were to choose a game to lose, that would be it. But like Brady said, if we won that, we'd be at the top of the conference by two points right now. Um, because, yeah, uh, Sunday's results were pretty decent, uh, USC lost to Evansville, which is a little scary, we're gonna maybe cover we'll do that, yeah. we'll that very soon, um, but Evansville beat UIC, Drake beat Valparaiso, but Valparaiso seems to be pretty content with hanging out mid-table this year. Um, which I'm okay with. I'm gonna say this us. Yeah. Um, Indiana State's under a low tie. I'm not worried about those two teams. Um, Murray State won again, so maybe they're on the rise here on the back half of the season. And Missouri State had their bye game, so we are currently tied with them at 12 points in second place, which will make this coming Sunday's game one of the biggest of the whole season. But first, we have to get through Evans Mill. Evansville, we, like you said, we can't look past that game. They beat UIC, a very high quality team. Was that at UIC or was that at Evansville? Um, yeah. At Evansville. At Evansville? Yep. I guess there's, from my understanding, that's a tough place to play. So I guess that might have been a factor. But at the same time, nope, that doesn't make sense. I was about to say, well, at the same time, you and I is a tough place to play. We beat UIC at home. Well, okay, then. So that's just tough standards at that point or something like that. I'm very quickly looking. I don't think... Yeah, Evansville has not scored more than one goal in conference play per game. Uh, so a very low scoring team, similar to Murray State, but we saw what Murray State did to us. Um, however, maybe if we could get two goals from our offense, statistically we'll be in the clear since Evansville seems to have trouble scoring. They have a couple 1-1 one -one draws, even a 0-0 zero -zero draw. Uh, against teams that we've beaten, like Southern Illinois, uh, Belmont, Murray State, they tied. So, uh, this team on paper seems winnable. However, we said the same exact thing about Murray State. Yeah, every game matters. I look past any team in this conference, especially Evansville, because history wise, we've lost like how many games in our team's history? 14? 13. 13. 13 losses, four wins, and three ties historically. That's not good. Now, these two teams have played each other, I think, I believe every year since 2005. So there's a lot of history here. Evansville historically is one of the best teams in the conference. Um, 
the past couple of years, they've kind of they've not been great. Uh, I don't even know if they made the tournament last year. No, they did not. Okay, I, that's what I was thinking. Because yeah. Illinois State's the same way. They have a nice history, but they make the tournament. Yeah, it's they kind of weird. Dead last last yeah. year. That was kind of funny actually, because uh, the previous year, uh, two years ago, they were actually pretty good. So last year we tied them two two. And um, from our understanding, that was a pretty disappointing tie last year. Like that was a game we should have won. Um, according to all, not all the players, but from talking to the players, I did. It seemed like we should have won that game. They just didn't show up to play. Um, pretty similar to what happened with Murray State. I feel like we just didn't show up to play. And uh, I feel like I feel like the Murray State game is a reality check. Like I know we keep going back to this game, but I feel like that's our reality check of hey, don't take any team lightly in our conference because. Other teams are looking at us now. They're looking up at us as the top dogs. So they're we're on their scouting report constantly. Like they're when they play us, they're ready to go. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, it's gonna sound weird. I think it's the perfect time for a loss like that. That game marked yep. our fifth out of ten. So the middle point. We crossed the bridge with Belmont. We now only have four games with us. We kind of had that mid-season wake-up call. Maybe a rough start with Drake, three shutouts in a row. We're kind of breezing past these teams, um, and quality teams like UIC. Um, and then you know this is a nice point to check. Hey, we still have Missouri State. We still have Valparaiso, two Colts solid teams. teams, and we have a couple other games that again we can't brush off. So every game matters. I think it's the perfect time to lose a game like that on the road as well as is fine. Um, in my opinion. And that sounds crazy, but we can't afford two losses because of how competitive the conference is this year. Because, like, in years prior, like, if you lose one game, there goes your one seed. But this year, it seems like with... Because Drake is going to lose another game. I'm willing to put money on this right now. They will lose another game. So that puts them at two losses in conference play, or one. One or two. So they'll drop points from that, and they've had a couple ties. I, I feel like... Like, the top... Finishing first isn't out of the picture, is where, where I'm going with this. No, but we don't have much room to lose points. I would expect at least nine points in these, these next four games. If we yeah. can't score nine points, we don't deserve to be first. We need to finish the season strong. And I'm only saying that because our competition is good. And Drake's a good team. Um, they've got through Valparaiso, Missouri State, you and I, and UIC. They're kind of through the thick of it. They lost to UIC. But st- oh, but you're saying you are, they already played those I'm games. I'm saying yeah. like, they have, I believe, I just checked first and then I forgot. But they have Illinois State, Evansville, Murray, Murray State. State, and then Belmont. So teams that, Murray State's kind of up on an upward trend, but Drake might be through some of the thick of it, and we still have a couple of very solid opponents to get through. Yeah. Yeah, very well said. Like Missouri State. Um, I was thought I was going to preview that, but I guess not. Oh no, here it is. We, Missouri State is so early. We are five and eighteen. Uh, there are no recorded ties against this team. Last year we lost them twice, uh, which is important. Yeah, the the two 0 loss last year was a hit to the crotch. If I'm being honest, not because of like on the field play, but because of the Missouri State mom, uh, Camille Day's mom, basically harassing us and yeah. harassing uh, Caitlin Richards the entire game. Like, bro, just be a fan of the game. Don't go around acting like you're you own the place. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I just had beef with Camille Day's mom. Camille Day's. Arguably the best keeper in the conference. He's very good. Yeah. They're facing a tough keeper. Uh, so last year we lose twice. However, in 2021, we won 2-0 on the road. That's their last road result versus Missouri State. Um, so there's a potential. Actually, that looks like our that was our only win against them on the road. Wait, I lied. Hey, I, but we I just, yeah, we've won two on the road. Person. But we have players that were on that team two years ago. That were on the team now, and they remember that win. They yeah. remember how big of a win that was for them two years ago. Big. Two years, years ago, big. because if I remember correctly, like if we didn't win that game, we don't make the playoffs. Yeah, ago. it was late enough in, in the season where like if we lost that, 
we were very, very close in not making the playoffs. I think that put us above the playoff line. Um, another result that day worked out really well for us. I think Drake tied or lost or something like that. Um, yeah, so big game. And this is this is this is the game of the season. Oh, if, 100%. if Drake wasn't the game of the season in the first game, obviously we didn't know the circumstances. Right now, that game turned out to be extremely important. We'd be in first by a lot. If Drake loses three points and we gain three, that's that's a huge swing. Um, so, but this game we're tied with Missouri State right now, as it stands. Uh, if we could beat them. That's huge for points. That's huge for tiebreaker reasons. It's everything is important about this game. We need to come out and win with a solid goal differential. And we will be if we win these next two games. Well, we're guaranteed to make the playoffs. First of all, well, well, statistically no, but well, we're on our way. Top eight. There's still twelve points available, so really any team can do it. Wait a minute. Even Southern Illinois could finish first. Oh, there's a six the point game. gap between us and Illinois State. Never yeah, mind. Yeah. Oh. Well, so if we win one game, we make the playoffs. I mean, that was not right with that. If we win and Illinois State loses this weekend, we make the playoffs. Yes, because that puts us nine points ahead. They can still tie. Okay, but the likelihood isn't there. That's statistically speaking. All right, if we get one win and one tie this weekend, or Illinois State loses twice this weekend, we make the playoffs. Anyways, basically, if we, if we win both of these two games, we'll be looking very solid for the playoffs. But some cool stats as we go into these games. This team is very close to becoming historically the best team in United history. Just don't pass that quick. Caitlin Richards, one shutout from tying and two shutouts from breaking. Uh, Jamie Reichenberger's program record. Uh, we are, oh gosh, we're at three shutouts away from tying program record, uh, three wins away from tying the program record, and four from breaking. So if we went out the season, we have broken the wins of the season record. Not even playing in the playoffs. Yeah. We need five more points. I believe it's three for goal and one for assist, if I get that right. Um, I more of those to break the team record for program points. Uh, sorry, break the program record for points in the season. And if we score, our next goal will break a program record for goals scored in a season. Do we rush the field if that happens on Thursday? Or on today, because today and when yeah. this video is being during the game. Yeah, I don't see why not. So <gasps> no, run onto the field, grab the ball, and just. Run away. Sign it, man. <laughs> no, so, this is, put it in your own display case. You're like, are, this is mine forever. We are technically one goal away from making history as the best team on our soccer team. As far as goal scored goes, uh, which is crazy to think about. I mean, we have broken our last year's goal scored by conference play this season, which yep. is crazy. I don't. We were scoring a lot this season, but did not score a lot last season. So it's a perfect storm for something like that to happen, but. It's very cool that one more goal will do it, and it's at home versus Evansville, so I have a feeling it will happen. Um, it should be pretty awesome. Like it so, sucks that it's for Thursday again because we can't guarantee there's going to be a massive student section for the game, so it won't be as hyped as it should be. But not to mention the weather is looking like it will rain all day up until and maybe during the game. Hey, so, Spencer might will be there. Yeah, we will. I'll be wearing my, I don't even know what player shirt I'll wear. Probably Ashley Harrington. I haven't worn that to a game yet, so probably Ashley's shirt. And the team is five assists away from tying the record, six from getting the record. So there's a lot of those that are beatable. Uh, honestly, I think all of them are achievable if we finish this season strong. And if we finish this season strong and win like one or two playoff games, we'd be broken. Almost all those records. I would bet a lot of money on. All right. Standings. Here's the table as it currently looks. Maybe you can put up a screenshot or something. That's why I'm doing it every week. So. Good. So Drake is ahead by one point, and we're tied with Missouri State. Most notably, there's only 
three points separating the first and fifth place. So there's there's a lot of room, especially with twelve uh, points for most teams. Twelve points are still on the table. Um, there's a lot of a lot of time for movement uh, this weekend. It's very important. It'll half the points available. So um, it's also important to know that one loss can define your season at this point in the year. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we lose on the wrong week and we're just sitting fifth. Yep. That's 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 the reality of, of how the table looks right now. So it's, you lose on the wrong day and you're sitting very bad. Uh, something to note is that the table is separated between first and fifth by only three points. So you lose on the wrong week, we could be sitting uh, out of a home playoff game, basically, um, which is crazy. It technically is still anyone's game, um, but we are close after this weekend we might have clinched a playoff depending on how things uh, shake themselves out. Especially at the bottom of the table, so. But I feel like we won't have to worry about that too much. Oh, someone waved to you. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Just giving me another distraction, but no, I feel like we pretty all summed that up. Uh, any last words before we have to head off and uh, I, I don't know how to wrap up podcasts anymore. This is bad. <laughs> We've done this so many times. We I can't let's, figure this skill out. Let's, let's do some rapid fire score predictions. So oh, where's Evansville? Oh, two 0 Two 0 I think I think if someone legendary will score the first goal to break the record. So I'm thinking Maddie Eastus will score the goal to break the record. She'll get it. Really in seven eight minutes in, I feel like we'll come out of that game on fire. Mm-hmm. Get a very early goal. Two 0 victory, and then. Do I have to be realistic or can I be dramatic? Yes. Be real. Uh, realistically, I can see that being a one-one draw. Unfortunately, I I I still have faith in my team. Like I want us to win, obviously, and like I don't know. Missouri State's a good team, so one-one draw. But if I'm being dramatic, oh, we're gonna kick the crap out of them five 0 easily. Lauren Hines hat trick. Olivia Kenefly with the brace. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. <laughs> I would say for Evansville, I'm going to predict a win. I think 2 0 is a pretty solid score line for us. Um, as far as who scores that first goal, oh man. Break the record. If it's Caroline, <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I'd be. Um, I'd be disappointed. He's just a solid. I'm going to kill Heitch. She's put a lot into this team. Oh, and for uh, the second goal? For the first. Oh, first. Goal. I think Lauren. You know, if she's up there on her leading scores of all time, I think it'd be fit if she if she hits it. So that's true. Missouri State, I'm gonna be the cynic here. I think Missouri State is the one out of the next four games that we lose. I think we won all the other three. Okay. I think we will lose two one at Missouri State. Uh, heartbreaker. And then just give us motivation for the playoffs when we play them again. Potentially play them again. So you know what? We've only lost twice this season, and each time we bounced back fine. Yep. The first time, we had three shutouts in a row afterwards, and the second time, we've already had one. So. It would be fitting to get three in a row, you know? That would be nice, especially because that third one was the first Missouri State. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess that would mean we would lose to Val Battle. That's fine, we're mid table. Yeah. All right. And then get a shutout against Illinois State. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Rankings wise, our ranking was hurt just a bit. Yep. We had dropped 119. We are now second in our player rankings in our conference. Missouri State drops, but to 100. Um, and everything else, I think, stays about the same. Missouri Except for Murray State bumped up by like, what, 50 points or 50 spots? Yeah, but when you're at that uh, low, two wins probably does you a lot of good. So I think they want to look at those. That's fair. Anyways, and we drop in the coaches pool. Down to 10. From 7 to 10th. Missouri State stays at 8. Um, not a big deal. I mean, hey, we lost. I think we were lucky to be there still. Yep. Uh, this is our fifth consecutive week ranking that coaches pool, which is crazy considering it's probably been at least two seasons since we've been ranking that pool. At least. Yeah, I just want to say we definitely weren't in that pool two years ago. Yeah. And, and like that, we were in that pool three years ago. Yeah. Traditionally, we haven't been a solid 
Denham University going up to women's soccer. Yeah, but, but yeah. we are. Well, now all the stops here. So. Oh yeah. All right. So we got a both of us predicted to win at Evansville, a 50-50. Well, uh, against Evansville at home, not at Evansville. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, you said that. Uh, we speak fast. Ah, uh, you're good. Um, Just wrap things up. Yep. And our Missouri State predictions are one loss and one tie. So. And well, a very bold win prediction as well. <laughs> yes. Five to nail. So more hype for the hat trick. We'll catch you after your those games and we ought to be very excited or very sad. Yeah, fair enough. Oh my gosh, it's fake. <laughs> Another person walk by the window and distract me, it's fine. Catch you guys next time. Rawr.